Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. The emotional state of crypto Twitter is always one extreme or another. This one coming from Rickus, and I could not agree more. Do not try to get influenced by people that have emotional traits, no matter how big their account is, with the daily noise. Focus on the calm accounts. You've had months of consolidation. It will not continue forever. And so, uh, you know, there are a lot of, I got to say, there are a lot of social media accounts out there that do uh, go super, super negative when the market's down, super, super positive when the market's up. I personally, I just wanted to kind of bring this up because I wanted to address something here. I always try to maintain positive, no matter if we're in a down market or an up market. I think at the end of the day, we have an amazing opportunity here. We have a great opportunity to accumulate cryptocurrency. I know a lot of us did back in 2022 and into 2023. Uh, and, you know, I try to maintain a positive attitude because I think, you know, that's what I would want. You know, when I first uh, started watching YouTube videos, I want to feel positivity. I mean, I'm always going to deliver negative news if, it, if it's there. But, you know, I don't want it to get us down. I know there is opportunity around the corner. I know, uh, you know, the negative sentiment generally means a great buying opportunity for many cryptocurrencies. So I thought I'd just bring this to your attention, guys, if you want are feeling like, uh, you know, we're kind of stuck in this consolidation phase right now. This is not going to last forever. For more information on what I'm going to be doing, once we do see these bulls run, you can follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel. And I'm going to be doing a, a live Q&A session, I believe, this week for my Patreon subscribers. So uh, if you guys are signed up, you will get an alert as to, uh, you know, when that is going to occur. Uh, and if you guys are not signed up yet, it is only $5 a month. Pretty good value, I think, for what you guys are getting. I've opened up my portfolio to all the subscribers. A lot of these altcoins, too, are uh, out-of-the-box cryptocurrencies, cryptos that I wouldn't normally or certainly wouldn't have invested in back in 2020 and in 2019. So, you know, I've learned a lot over the last bull run. And this time I'm treating it different. So patreon.com slash working money channel. If you guys are interested, there is a trend though of XRP being accumulated, XRP tokens even moving across the network. XRP crypto will bring in this to our attention. So mega XRP whales have emerged after 99 million tokens have been transferred. 99 million, that is huge. A massive XRP transaction has recently caught the attention of the crypto community as a new whale appears to have surfaced following the transfer of a staggering 99.2 million XRP. Now, currently, as of the time of this recording, that is worth about uh, $61.6 million. Uh, this current, or sorry, this unknown new wallet was activated with the transfer, birthing the advent of a mega XRP address. So it's a brand new wallet too. The destination wallet was launched on August the 24th within uh, a couple of days. If you guys are watching this video on the day that I'm releasing it and current only contains the 99.2 million XRP stash. Interestingly though, the sending wallet was activated on August 22nd with 102.7 million XRP of which 99.2 million XRP was sent out. So that is an interesting me uh, metric here, you know, because we don't usually see that, you know, generally we can trace these wallets back to, uh, you know, a particular exchange, right? If it's for ODL purposes, generally that's what we see uh, a lot of these wallets accumulating or shifting XRP because they are larger wallets. But if these new wallets were minted just recently, I get the incline, I get the sense that uh, investors are realizing, okay, you know, this is probably the one of the last opportunities we're going to get. I mean, they're probably looking at the broader market right now. I just have the XRP chart up right now. XRP is trading at the time of this recording at 596.596. Um, but generally speaking, what these traders are doing, they're likely looking at the broader market. They're looking at the fact that, you know, it has been now 175 uh, days of consolidation for Bitcoin. Uh, and if you guys didn't catch this morning's video, which I will link up here in the top right hand corner, we're getting very, very close to the beginning of that euphoria phase. We did not think that this would go on for so long, but because Bitcoin did top before the halving, uh, because of the ETFs, you know, a lot of people are assuming because of the regulatory clarity surrounding the Bitcoin ETFs, or rather the, you know, the, the fact that those ETFs have been launched, institutional investors came in and uh, the price of Bitcoin just kind of skyrocketed before it generally would have time-wise uh, in this cycle compared to, la uh, compared to previous cycles. So because of all that, now we have this consolidation phase going longer, but guys, we're getting to that point where the time is coming to an end and, uh, you know, all these institutional investors are probably stacking up on, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies that they want to cash out of for profit during the euphoria phase. And I'm sure uh, many of them are probably going to be holding some XRP like I'm going to be doing and like I'm going to be outlining over there at patreon.com slash working money channel, still working out those numbers, but I'm going to be holding some, I'm going to be uh, selling some during this bull run too. So anyway, wanted to thank uh, XRP Crypto Wolf just for pointing that out. Now, subject 
perspective views here, guys. Brought this up. Ripple partner Neom just teamed up with JP Morgan. This is almost as good as a direct Ripple partnership. Watch this. At Neom, we understand the need for speed and transparency, but we also understand that there needs to be trust in the system. JP Morgan Payments is our natural choice. So just a quick clip there, only 18 seconds. They are going with JPM Payments, but Neom Global, of course, is a Ripple partner and have been a Ripple partner for quite some time. Uh, we've also had uh, you know news in the past that JP Morgan was very bullish or is very bullish if Ripple does succeed at winning the case. They said this uh, several months ago before we did have uh, you know, a final verdict in the case and there's still some time to appeal. So we don't know how that is going to transpire, at least not yet. It is not a fait accompli, but you know, it's looking as though these partners are connecting, starting up something. It looks as though in preparation for when the market does allow for full global adoption. So I wanted to thank Subjective Views there for posting that. We also have an update from the Palau stablecoin guys. Uh, Vet here on Twitter did post this, looked into chain data on how the Palau stablecoin pilot is going on the XRP ledger. A total of 1,181 transactions are, uh, are occurring or have occurred already on the XRPL. 731 payment transactions of the uh, PSC stablecoin. So Palau's uh, specific stablecoin there. Rest is trust lines, etc. Palau Pilot Project consumed a total of guess how much? 0.0017149999 XRP in fees. So not even a tenth of an XRP, guys. <laughs> that is huge. Very affordable for uh, you know the people who want to leverage the XRP ledger and want to use XRP in these transactions. I mean, think of the Ethereum gas fees. Think of how expensive they can get when the Ethereum blockchain is clogged. The amounts in the payment flows, okay, typically stay in a range between five and uh, one hundred PSC. But there's also notable ledger, uh, sorry, larger payments that have been done. Looking at the on-chain data, it only makes sense that they were happy with the XRP ledger. All transactions, apart for a, uh, apart from a few, were processed fast and at a low cost. So here is just uh, a video, just a screen grab, pretty much of the uh, of the ledger here, just kind of showing you some of these details. And uh, I'm just scrolling through it, but I will link it in the description of the video for you guys. 731 payments, uh, trust sets, 393. You guys can see here the fees, total fees, 0.001714999 XRP. And uh, there are just some more, uh, he zooms in here on uh, just some more uh, statistics. If you guys want to take a look at that video. And again, this is the Palau stablecoin. So the island nation of Palau looking to, uh, well, eventually launch a stablecoin in the island nation that will be running on the XRP ledger called the PSC, the Palau stablecoin. So some great news there coming from VET. We know crypto is an emerging asset class, and it is also very noticeable how uh, mainstream news is even shifting the narrative. Remember, you know, just, uh, well, at the bottom of the market, you know, FTX collapse, I think, was a good indication of how negative the media could have been on cryptocurrencies. And, uh, you know, Zoom is pointing out the same here. Until yesterday, crypto was a scam, and today it's the new oil and gold, and this is coming out from uh, from Forbes, the new oil and gold crypto is suddenly braced for the most important week after the Federal Reserve powered Bitcoin price surge. So they're calling it the new oil and gold. So guys, this could be very, very important for crypto this week. Uh, here is a, um, a quote here. Here, uh, let me just pause that. That's a little distracting. We believe the most important week for the stock market this year and potentially in years for, uh, for the street will be next week as the godfather of AI and NVIDIA have earnings on deck. Of course, NVIDIA is uh, responsible to, I mean, generally NVIDIA does rally when uh, Bitcoin rallies because it does provide uh, the chips to mine Bitcoin. So Bitcoin price in the wider crypto market could be set to ride NVIDIA's coattails if it beats expectations, I personally think it's the other way around. Bitcoin often touted as digital gold remains far more closely correlated to the stock market and specifically technology stocks than gold, uh, which has hit an all time high this month. In June, a Bitcoin price downturn saw $500 billion wiped out from the combined crypto market in just over a month. But guys, that is going to change and that is going to change very, very soon. So uh, I think, you know, just the more important part here is that Forbes is calling this the new oil and gold cryptocurrency here to stay. So I wanted to thank Zoom for pointing that out. And when we take cryptocurrency and we relate it to a real world setting, people in the industry 
are posting on LinkedIn. This one courtesy of XRP Drops here. And uh, he happened to see this article. This is uh, directly from LinkedIn. Mohammed Arif, Swift versus Ripple. Okay, so really kind of going over the, uh, you know, the, the two technologies and comparing them side by side. The battle for the future of cross-border payments. Uh, so I'm just going to read you guys a little bit of this. It is a fairly lengthy article, so I'm not going to read the full thing. But he goes over, uh, you know, some factors here. The world of cross-country payments is developing, driven by the need for faster, more efficient and secure transaction methods. At the forefront of this revolution are two major players. There's Swift, of course, and there is Ripple. Swift has been the dominant force in international banking for five decades, facilitating billions of transactions across the globe. Meanwhile, Ripple, leveraging blockchain technology and its cryptocurrency XRP, presents itself as a modern alternative with the potential to disrupt traditional systems. This article offers an in-depth comparison comparison of these two payment systems, examining their technologies, capabilities, and future prospects. Guys, this is important, okay? And let me just read you guys some of the headings here. So the 10 key areas, and again, I will link this in the description if you guys are interested. First, the technology. Second, transaction speed. Third, the cost. Fourth, the security, okay? Five, scalability. Six, uh, uh, network reach. Seventh, compliance. Eighth, liquidity. Nine, we've got transparency. Ten, the future potential. So what did they find out here? The big quote here in this article, if Ripple can overcome its regulatory challenges and continue expanding its network, it has the potential to disrupt the traditional cross-border payment system. Banks looking for faster, cheaper, and more secure payment solutions may turn to Ripple as a viable alternative to SWIFT. Now, why that is important, guys, is because they did, in fact, get a scorecard here. If you just take a look at that, uh, you, you can see the areas of comparison. So all those areas that I uh, just listed there, with regards to technology, Ripple wins in that category. Transaction speed, obviously Ripple wins. Cost, Ripple wins. Security, Ripple wins as well. The scalability, Ripple does win. The network reach, now this is why Ripple has been working on getting more partnerships. Uh, Ripple is still only a six compared to Swift at a 10, but Ripple is certainly working on that. Compliance is the only other area where Ripple is lagging behind uh, with a seven compared to Swift at nine. So Ripple has been working on the partnerships, but also the compliance. Obviously, those are the two things that Ripple uh, really needs. So the SEC lawsuit is really the big thing here, making sure that XRP is compliant. But guys, we're so close for that to be a reality. Liquidity, obviously, Ripple does win there. Transparency, Ripple is at an eight and uh, Swift is at a seven. And the future potential overall, Ripple is at a nine, whereas Swift is at an eight. So Ripple's final score, 8.3, whereas Swift's final score is 7.2. I think we can see where this is going, guys. So I wanted to thank XRP Drops and the uh, the original poster of this article too, who is uh, Mohammed Arif for posting that. Katrin Kohler here from Ripple even commented on this five months ago. The regulation is quintessential. This one from Real XRP Boy. Listen to this. It goes back to banks or, or regulated institutions can't just do anything in a decentralized fashion, right? You first need a framework, you need the regulation, you need the proper procedures and, and risk mitigation actions around it. So I think there are still a few steps we have to do before we can go into that world. XRP holders know it. Ripple knows it too. The banking world, I think, does realize it as well. And, uh, you know, considering we are seeing, uh, you know, 99 million more XRP being accumulated onto wallets that have just been initiated within the last day or so, I think also does uh, point to the fact that uh, big players, guys, are interested. Big players are investing in more XRP because they see what the future is going to hold. Now, another one here from Smoke. Confirmation from the Central Bank of Canada indicates that the switch refers to the activation of blockchain technology. So are we going to flip that switch? Remember what David Schwartz said in 2017, the main limiting factor right now is everyone having enough confidence that the system is going to work correctly, that they're willing to flip the switch and let it make large irreversible payments without intervention. So, um, you know, as we just went over with the Swift versus Ripple uh, analysis here. You can see the scorecard. We are on the precipice of something big, but even the Bank of Canada knows that the switch does need to be flipped. And guys, it relates to blockchain technology. They're going to work well for a number of years and then things are going to start to go wrong. You can fix it at the margin first, but eventually you just need to switch to something else. And she believes, so the author of this article here believes that blockchain could be that something else, that it's hard not to be fascinated by something so transformative. And so, so many people have been saying this same thing 
things could start to go wrong if we do in fact stick with the old financial system. Whereas we all know guys, Ripple's already ready. Even comparative to Swift today, all they need pretty much are the partnerships and the compliance issues, two things that they have been trying to sort out for the last several years now. So me personally, I think we're in a good spot. I think that we still have a bit of opportunity here to accumulate some of those altcoins. Some are going to be real world utility coins. Others, well, I'm looking at some different metrics too for my $15,000 plus portfolio over there at patreon.com slash working money channel. You can follow me for more information, but that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.